Hi, I'm Bergen Rackley, and today we're going to talk about Power Apps and Power Automate, and more specifically, show examples of some of the cool things that you can do with these tools. These demos have a lot of variety in their purpose, and I think that goes to show how versatile the Power Platform is. Alright, starting simple with our first example, we've got a list with a thousand items in it, and each entry represents an employee at a company. This is dummy data, so don't really question why you've got a um, geologist working in the same place as a librarian. But uh, each field we've got a name, their position, and their current rate. And we want to export this list to a CSV file. Uh, either we automate it, so it does it on a schedule, or we do it manually with a button press. It doesn't really matter, but we want to use a flow to export this list and send it via an email. So that's what this flow right here does. It exports to CSV. Uh, we have it set for recurrence, but we can also just run it manually. So looking at this flow right now, I have all the important steps pulled up so we can go over them. The first thing the flow does is it sends a REST request to SharePoint to get these following uh, fields from our list. The title field, which is the name, the position code, and the current rate. And it returns the top 5,000 items. REST requests can't return more than 5,000 items. So we have uh, steps later to handle that so we can get all of the data in the list if it exceeds 5,000 items. Uh, we parse the re response, we turn it into a data we can actually use, and we use the create CSV table step to format our tables. We have a column called name, and we put the title field in it, position, and our position code, and current rate, we put our current rate in it. And this is a comma-separated table. I uh, will show you what that looks like when we run the flow in a moment. So we've got the first 5,000 items, but if there are more items in the list, we'll use the next link property to get them. So we use that to figure out if there are more items, and if there are, we send another request, we get those items the same way, and we create another table with title, position code, and current rate. But we leave the headers out, so it doesn't create a new table within our list. And what we do both times is that we put all of these tables into a string, and we just concatenate that string into one solid string. And then, finally, we send an email to myself, and we can actually just put that string as the body content of a file that we create in the attachments. So it's a CSV file, and the content is just our comma-separated string that we're about to generate. So if we run this test, so if we run this test, we can see what we get. We get send a request to SharePoint, we get a whole bunch of garbage you can't read, that then gets parsed into something that's a little bit more understandable, but still not very legible. Um, but flow gets it. We create our table. This is a lot more easy to understand. You can see we've got our column headers and our items, and that gets put into the string. We do it again. We create our email. We send it. And if we go to my email now, you can see that I have, in fact, then emailed a CSV file with all of our list items as entries. All right, moving on to the next demo. What we need to do is to create a system for employees at a company to sign up for an event. But we need to ensure that no more than 200 employees sign up for the event. And we also need to keep track of who signed up for it, uh, what slot they signed up for, and then track how many people are signed up. We also need to ensure that the same user can't fill out more than one slot. So if they've already filled in a time slot, they can't apply for another one. So that's what this app does. If we demo it, you can see that it auto-populates with my name, but I can apply for anyone at the company, but just put it back to me. Uh, it also auto-populates with my email, and I've got three options, wave one, wave two, and wave three. So let's say I think wave one is the best time slot for me. I click it, the submit button is now enabled. I click submit, and we're taken to this screen. It says, congratulations, you've signed up for this event. We go back to the list, you can see now slots reserved has gone up by one and there's a new item in the list that says I've signed up for this time slot. Now, let's say I close out of that app and I come back later and I want to fill out another time slot. So the app opens and quickly navigates me to the screen saying you've already signed up for this time so I'm not able to fill out for another time slot. And we do this is, The way we do this is pretty simple. What we've got is a form with default data and a gallery with time slots populated from the folders in this list. 
this slots remaining is just 200 minus the number in this column, so we've got 199 slots now. When an item in this gallery is selected, this button is available to submit, and when you click submit, it submits this form. And this form has a hidden field called time. And that field populates with the selected value of this gallery. So if I click wave three, it changes to wave three, wave one, wave one, wave two, wave two. So this field becomes submittable. This form submits, creates an item in this list, and increments the slot counter by one. Another feature of this app is what happens whenever a slot gets full. So we can demonstrate that right now. We've got... Suppose we have 200 people who signed up for this event. It's completely full. We come back. You can see that in our gallery, wave one has been filtered out, and that's because we're filtering out items that have 200 or greater submissions. I think this highlights one of the things that Power Apps is really good at, which is making sure that users submit correct data. If you've got a system like a reservation system and you need to ensure that the data is entered correctly, there's no typos or formatting mistakes, Power Apps can lock the user into how they're submitting their data. You don't have to worry about someone pressing the wrong key or filling out, forgetting to fill out a field. The Power App will force them to fill it out correctly. You don't have to worry about any of that at all. Our final demo for today uses both Power Apps and Power Automate to create something a little bit more fun. What we've got here is an auction system for employees at a company. So we put up items for sale in a list and they appear here according to the data we filter, such as when the, the auction starts, when the auction ends, and we've got current bid, starting bid, uh, who's bidding, and it creates a pretty robust auction system for employees. So let's take a look at a, a past auction item. Uh, this is an item that's been won, it's won by me. It shows the winning bid, when it started, when it ended, just a little bit of data for the user to see what previous auctions have been. So let's take a look at the current auction items and see where the flow comes in. When making this app, it was really important to ensure that two users who had the app open at the same time didn't submit a bid in the same amount for the same item. Because then whoever came in last would get the bid even though whoever came in first is the rightful owner. So what this button in our flow does is it ensures that when you go to submit a bid, it returns the current price of the item. And then it checks that value against the bid you're trying to submit, and if it's greater, then the bid won't go through. And we use Flow to ensure that the data we're using is up to date. Looking at the Flow, you can see it's very simple. It's the Power Apps call, and then we can get File Properties. We go to our library where our items are stored, and we return the current bid after passing in the ID. And then that's used in a function to say, hey, is our value greater or lower than the current desired bid? In this case, it's greater, so we submit bid and the bid goes through. This app also showcases future auction items so you can see what's upcoming. So click on this, you can see starting bid of this item is $20, starts here, ends here, gives you a nice little description and an image of the item. The reason I chose this demo is because it shows that Power Apps and Power Automate, they can be used to do really creative things. So it doesn't just have to be data validation, sending emails, getting items from a SharePoint list. It can do all those things, but depending on how you use them, you can create very different experiences for the user.